Dummy Switch Pod, and we're back, back with another preview, Super Rugby Unlocked, mm-hmm. round three. Yes, yes. First match of the round sees the Pumas going to the Stormers, you know, Friday mm. night, Friday night lights. Let's see what we have in store here. We've got a Pumas team coming, you know, re- feeling relatively high off the win, uh, and, a, and yeah. a Stormers team coming off a relatively unimpressive win. <sighs> So I don't yeah. know if you want to get into that first. Yeah, let's get into that. Uh, I think Pumas, as you, as you pointed out, I think they, they're coming in, they'll have a bit of confidence after they win uh, away at the Greek was at home, Bombella Stadium. Um, look, they, they seem to be balanced in terms of the selection. There's a, there's a bit of consistency, uh, more consistency as opposed to the, other, the first two rounds. Uh, so, again, I'm, I'm looking... Again, I think... They're going to have to step up up front, you know, uh, against the Stormers pack. Uh, yes, the, the Stormers will be missing kids off, but nonetheless, I still think that Pumas will need to step up up front. You know, then again, the loose forward trio is going to be very important. So, a guy like John Jerry Rudolph, I think he's going to come into it. Vili Engelbrecht as well. Uh, they're going to have to Landsberg show what they've got. Well. Yeah, Landsberg in the, in, the, in the locking position, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I think for the Pumas, in order to have a shot in this game, they need to to really play with the same energy that they had uh, against the Greek was. But uh, execution is going to be very important for them. And uh, I, I do think that based on what the Stormers put out last week, you know, of course, we're going to get a reaction from them. I, I, I do believe that. But based on what the Stormers put out last week, I think if the Pumas get it right in terms of their execution, you know, and minimizing their mistakes, they may be able to sneak this one. Um, they, yeah, I, I do see that they have a chance. but. Again, it's a stormer side filled with a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of stars, a lot of firepower. And, and, and I think, you know, they would have really had a hard look at themselves this week, you know, in terms of how they played. And I, and I think we should see a better performance from them. And most likely, the Stormers essentially sneak it, you know, at the, at, the, at the end there. You know, going into the Stormers, I'm happy that, well, you see a guy like Edel van der getting a chance. I think he's really an explosive winger. I think he actually should have been in the side ahead of Yelon Zas. I actually do not know what Zas. As I was got as them on either wing, but essentially they're competing for a position. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it, it would have been good to see uh, somebody else get a chance in, in Zas's place. Look, he's getting a second chance this weekend. I think that whole storm is team really they they are notice. You know, they uh, particularly the starters. You know. Uh, in the pack, they need to they they need to have a reaction this weekend. You know, they really need to have a reaction. I'm not too sure why uh, JD Schickling has been moved through to the bench. I would have I would have thought you know Murat maybe would have been the guy to go onto the bench and and, and see a locking a lock combination of uh, Schickling and Van Sale. You know, but I guess the coaches have their own reasons for that. But yeah, my view. I think Stormers will sneak it. Probably, I'd say, a five-point ball game, uh, Stormers way, I, I, I believe. For me, I mean, you've got a Pumas team that, are, you know, they'll be feeling good coming home of the job that they mm. did against the Greek was. Uh, like you said, the, the loose forwards, they're going to be big in this one compared to a, a Stormers pack that, you know, they've, they've made a few changes. It could be a bit disjointed. Whereas the Pumas, they've, you know, they've rewarded the guys that came in second game, mm. did the job. You know, they've remained largely the same from that team. Uh, individual performances by guys like Eddie Fouchier, Van der Bank on, on, on defense, Neil Maritz. You know, these guys, they're going to stand out, I think, for a third week in a row. And um, for me, I mean, looking at the Stormers, you've got Yanchis and Willemso, who are largely unimpressive. And they're yeah. going to be coming up against Ginter Smuts and Eddie Fouchier, who have been impressive, but for smaller unions. And I think these guys will, will, will want to take the chance to show them up. Yeah, they will. I mean, they, they are playing against Springboks, so it's, it's, it's a chance for the Pumas guys to really, you know, stick one to the guys that, that are in the Springboks to show that, listen, you know, we, we can beat you. You know, that's, at the end of the day, that's what it's going to They're be. Coming, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be at home and they'll be looking to embarrass them. Yeah, and, and, and that's what it is. And if the Stormers don't pitch up, if that pack, the Stormers pack doesn't pitch up, you know, the Pumas, 
based on on the on the on the performance against the Greekers, they have the potential to really put them to the sword. You know, although uh, not to the sword in terms of a big score margin, but really, but get the win. You know, find them out. Uh, you know, find them out. Yeah. Win. Personally, but, with but, with with kids off out, you know the the penalties the penalties that 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 he produces the, the game changer that he is, and to Benny yeah. on the ground as well, you've lost those two. You've essentially lost points on the scoreboard with those two going out. And yeah. um, for me, I've got, I've got the Stormers by three, slightly smaller margin than you. But mm. to be quite honest, I, I, I wanted to go with the draw even. This one could go either way. I think on yeah. the day, Eddie Fushia is going to give Willemsa a real test. So will Ginter Smuts. Yeah, and goal kicking is going to be a thing as well. So I think yeah. Willemsa has got to make sure that he's, he's on point with his goal kicking. And, and I think in this game, uh, Captain Siakulis has got to st- he's got to step up really and pull his team, you know, together. And uh, their lose for trio needs to be a factor at the breakdown. But uh, as you quite rightly pointed out, with with uh, uh, Kitsov not in and uh, Dubeni missing as well uh, th- this weekend, you know, a guy like Mbonambi as well, he becomes very important at the breakdown. We know that he can mm-hmm. he can jackal, you know. But the lose for trio they also need to step up in order for you know, the backs to be released. But yet again, as the same thing as I said last week, you know, if they do get that ball, the halfbacks, the Yankees and Willem, so they need to make the right decisions to release the guys out wide because they, they definitely have pace out wide. They have firepower out wide. It's all going to be, it's always up front as we know. But but yeah, uh, five points. I say Storm is five points. You go three. So we'll, three. we'll see what happens in that game. Let's see. Moving on, Lions cheaters. A Lions team being hit by COVID on this week. Uh, oh, you've got man. an injury. Elton Yanchi is out with injury, and you've got the COVID pulling out a few mm. players. Yeah, oof, look, this one is, I think it's going to be a, a really difficult one for the Lions. I know they're at home. Uh, they just, I think they've, COVID has really slammed them, you know, caught them at the wrong time. And, and I think it's going to break their momentum a little bit. And I, I think they will struggle a bit against the cheaters, you know. We will, I think, weather permitting, although I don't think we should have any weather issues, but I think we will see an open game because both unions like to move the ball around. You know, it's good to see, look, as much as uh, Yankees is, is out, it's good to see a guy like Gianni Lombard getting a shot at 10. I think he's going to bring a lot of di- that dynamic play from there. He's an exciting youngster and he, and he loves to, to, to release the ball. You know, the, the Lions are exciting, you know, in terms of the youngsters that they have. Um, the, the Mornay van der Bears, you know, Rabs will be itching to get another... He's got Similani getting a start as well. Similani also getting a start, I know. Uh, so, you know, they, they're looking... They look... They have the potential, you know, they're looking exciting. Uh, they do have that experience on the bench with a guy like uh, Yanni Duplessis, but we don't know whether or not he's over the hill. So, you know, that's still to be seen. But I do believe uh, that uh, they will find this one a bit difficult against the Cheetahs because... Primarily because the Cheetahs have got, I think, more experience uh, as a group together, as a unit. And, and, and besides Rua and Pina, they're unchanged. Yeah, they, they, they're really, they're mainly unchanged, you know. And it's, for me, I'm happy for a guy like uh, in the Cheetahs, Junior Pokemela, you know, he's, he, he's the captain, you know. So uh, it, it shows that they back him, you know, and, 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 and he's got the buy-in for, from the guys that are around him, which is, which is good to see, you know. It's, it's really good to see that, you know, I know in South African rugby circles, it's always a thing, you know, the monkey on the back around transformation and things like that. But here we are seeing that, you know, a guy has been there at that union, he's been putting in the graft and he's getting, he's getting rewarded, you know, and, and the reward is coming from within the group, you know, because uh, he has to, the guys need to follow him as a leader and, 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 and they're backing him. Clearly they are, you know, and I think from the cheaters, we can expect more and much of the same. They're moving the ball around. And, and really looking to put the Lions under pressure with ball in hand. And conversely, the Lions will be looking to do the same. You know, so I, I think this one is going to be a really exciting game. Uh, I, I say cheaters, cheaters by 15 points, you know, from myself. 15? Yeah. <laughs> no, faith, no faith in my boy. I think the Lions, the Lions will be at risk, you know, of that back three cutting them up. They're quite dangerous. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, the, you know, the loose forwards, you've got a situation where Creel is out. You've got Pelzer coming in. Uh, there's quite a lot of changes. The, the issue for them will sort of be to keep up with the Cheetahs, the Cheetahs, Lucy's, which, I mean, they, they've got great combination play and Silas carrying Pocamela, as you mm. mentioned, has been impressive. And you've got Visa there, who's 
he's adding that real steel. You know, he, yeah. You know, he, he's shown Dwayne Formulan some problems, and I mean, you've got a guy sort of Len Massain is is more of a Warren Whiteley linking number eight that he's playing mm-hmm. against. He's not he's not really as physical, so I think they're going to have a problems there. Um, Ray Nachfenter, let's see what he does. His stock is rising. We'll see. We'll see how he performs on the day. But for yeah. me, I've got the Lions by three. I think somehow they'll be able to pull this one out of the fire. Gianni mm. Lombard, last time we saw him at 10 was uh, Super Rugby last season when Elton Yanchis moved to 10. Um, I mean, sorry, moved to 12. 12, yeah. And he, he was very impressive then. So I, I, think, I think with him coming in, with Similani coming in, Van Berg, I mean, you know, it, 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 it could be something, there could be something there. Yeah, look, uh, of course, for me, it is going, it's definitely going to be an exciting game, you know, and, and, the, and those guys that you mentioned, Van der Berg, Lombard, Milani, they're all going to have a say in the game, you know. Um, I, just, I just feel the experience of the cheaters, you know, uh, and just them as a unit, they, 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 they will just have a little bit too much for, for, for the Lions, you know. Again, if you're looking at up front, the they, they, the pack has been doing well as a unit, you know, the lock pairing as well. I think perhaps uh, with the Lions, uh, Marvin Ori has got to really step up as well, you know, in terms of from a, a set piece perspective at, uh, at line up time, because he's very good at stealing the ball. If he can get stuck into the cheaters and disrupt their ball, then, then, then yes, I can, then yes, I can agree with you that the Lions can sneak it, but I still, you know, holding my hat firm and saying cheaters by 15, I think for, for them because of all the guys that are out of the line. So, sorry, Courts, I know it's your boys, you know, but I have to go again. I have to go with just, you know, just, just the overall picture of the cheaters that have presented. I think they'll have, they'll be just a tad bit better than the Lions. We'll see how that one goes. I've still got the Lions by three. Moving into the third and final game of the round, Bulls versus the Sharks. Do you want to get into this one, your team? Yeah, well, this is my boys, you know, against 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 the Bulls at Loftus. So this is going to be a very interesting game. I think what you've seen here is Jay Quattro somehow like kind of put together, the, the, particularly from a backline perspective, more outside of Rio Aplon, more similar guys, you know, that played against the, the Sharks and the yeah. Super fan Saturday, you know, with Kurt Lyons getting a start at, uh, on the wing, uh, Hendricks moving back to 12, Stedman Hans uh, back at 13. So I do think if, if the Bulls are, if the Bulls pack give those guys good ball, you know, I, I think our midfield is going to struggle a little bit, you know, to, to contain those guys from the Bulls if they're going to be on song, you know. So it's going to be interesting. It's interesting to see that. Uh, you know, the lost lover has been, he's not, he's not part of this match day squad. You know, on a Brita, you've got Ulrich Lowe coming in there for him. You know, and you don't see his on car as well, you know, on the bench. So I think that's, that's telling in terms of, they really haven't made an impact as yet, you know. And I think it's quite right giving the other guys a chance. Myself and Amava gets a shot, you know, to start uh, coming back as a former Bulls guy. So, you know, this one is going to be tough to call. It's always been... You know, Bulls and Sharks has always been one of those those games that are tied to call. Uh, for for the Sharks, you know, with Spoon Gossi coming back, I think that's a that's a boost for us in terms of outright. But the key thing again, you know, I think in, in, the, in this sort of a game, particularly if they're going to loft this, it's going to be up front. You know, if, if they don't step up up front, it's they, they're going to have. They're going to have trouble, you know, and, and what you've seen is with the teams, like with the Stormers when they came off a bye, they really struggled, you know, and so I'm hoping that the Sharks, you know, having already played but had a bye afterwards, that, that they come back and they click a bit better and they show better sort of synergy and, and, and progression in how they play, you know. So, yeah, this one's a bit tight to call. Be excited to see Yao Peng uh, coming off the bench. I'm excited for him and I'm ha- very happy for him, you know, that he, he's going to get a shot. But... Yeah, for me, this one is a bit, it's difficult to call, you know, for this one, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to say Sharks by three, of course, because I'm a Sharks guy, I want them to win, I'll, I'll say Sharks by three uh, to, to take this one, but a lot of things need to go right for, for both teams, you know, the Bulls desperately need a win, where the Sharks also need to put together a complete performance as a, as a, as a unit, you know, particularly from a pack perspective, because 
Bulls at Loftus, that's where it's going to be. If up front, if, 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 if we're not going to step up, we're going to, we're going to run into trouble and it may be a very long evening for us, but I still think Sharks by three. For me, I've, I've, I've got to echo a lot of your points there. The Bulls, Creel, Creel looks solid at 15. Um, mm-hmm. Hendricks moving back to 12 just proves that they chickened out against Francois <laughs> by moving him to 13. Hans yep. in, I mean, we, we sort of feel like it was a bit unfair to leave him out after the performance he had at Superfan Saturday. I mm-hmm. mean, but it's a, it's, it's a Bulls team that's largely, Im- there's no imagination within. It's very, it's very boring. 9 to 10, Mone Stein doesn't look like he's quite on form. The combination play isn't looking great. So ultimately, I think that they'll struggle. The struggles will continue. And uh, a Sharks team where I think there's just more exciting players. And course, he's there. He's definitely going to test the wingers. Uh, uh, Lobok, Lobok is there to prove a point, you know. See, yeah. see what they're missing out on. You and someone, someone, you know, he's got more ex- experience than Creel. So, I mean, he'll be looking to test him. You know, Hamba will be looking to solidify himself against Fancel, who's had some, some good performances. Uh, and I think I think the Sharks uh, Lucy's will dominate on the day. They're more they're more agile. They're more imaginative. They're more playing with ball in hand type players. And uh, even on the bench, Yao Pente. Ultimately, I, I feel like he should have even been starting. I know he's he's new to the union, but Werner Cock makes too many mistakes for me. Yeah. And uh, uh, yep. I can agree. I can agree. I can agree with that you know. Be, Based on his form right now, he would have easily slotted in as a starter. So I can't disagree with that. I've got Sharks by five. I've got Sharks by five. I think both struggles will continue. Yeah. Jake White, this, 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 this marriage is off to a rocky start. <laughs> Soon they're going to be calling for his head. If he doesn't, if he doesn't pull this one, if they don't win uh, enough games, I think uh, the Loftus faithful are going to start getting frustrated with him and I probably want to see see the back of him if they if, if the woes continue. But at the end of the day, I think again, it's going to be a tight game. You know, uh, I feel like for the Sharks uh, from our side, I think Notch has got to step up. You know, particularly from the physical perspective, he's got to bring that physical confrontation. I understand, yes, he's a raging loose sport, but he's got to bring that element because it's at Loftus. Mm. He's got to bring that physicality. You know, we already have that in Pepsi. We know James Fenter is going to bring it. Hopefully, he steps up as well. You know, Howard Andrews, he's been solid enough, but yeah, you know, you know, him and Ruben van Heerden, they need to impose themselves on this game as well. They're just uh, this whole shots pack, they need to, you know, uh, I still don't understand why a guy like JJ van der Mesh hasn't started, they uh, earned the starters yet, but look, it's to be seen, but uh, yeah, shocks by three, go shocks. I know you're going for the Lions, even though I disagree, but hey, you know, all the best. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. I mean, I've, I've, I've got all three as being tight games. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it'll be entertaining, especially the Lions one. And yeah. that's it. That's it for the roundup this week. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. That's it. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers quarters.